and turn on the transcript too. So this could be useful for other people who are just thinking to join this group, yeah. get a little introduction. Yeah, exactly. I figured, yeah, if we're going to give a, <laughs> if we're going to give an intro, it would be good to, to have it on the record. Absolutely. Um, let's, let's try doing the, uh, let's, let's try describing the other one, Vincent, I'll go first. Um, so Vincent's working on Catalyst, which is kind of a multi-directory uh, com community events and communities and people. Um, so it's like a, I, I'm going to say something which actually really underplays it. Um, it's kind of like a massive Rolodex of like, you know, like if, if you wanted to get stuff done to make the world a better place, you would look in Vincent's Rolodex, except it's, it's like a hundred times better than a Rolodex because Vincent does magic stuff to interrelate everything. And so, um, and, and he keeps adding stuff to it. So right now we're, I'm, I'm helping him. He's doing the work. There's a tiny little part where I can help a little bit, uh, which is um, uh, something that keeps track of just like Zoom chats um, that are going on for a call and all the links in them and who, you know, who said what and stuff like that. So for each event that a group is having, Vincent is, has a page for each event, you know, each meeting. And then there's all the things about that meeting you know, uh, uh, what links got brought up, what resources got mentioned, you know, the, the organizers can put uh, additional information, um, other notes like uh, from a, a HackMD or something like that. So um, really, really amazing and cool. So That's interesting. with relationship Great. to Flotilla, Flotilla is largely, it's kind of me and Vincent, um, uh, and another guy, Charles Blass, was also one of the the original founders of Flotilla. I like Charles. Um, yeah, he's a good guy. I know him. We've we've got a common interest in both helping people organize information or, or organization uh, information getting organized for people, and then helping people use that or information to learn about each other, find out you know how can I help, how can I get help, what, what can mm -hmm. I do. So that's kind of the gist of Flotilla. And yeah. then for interoperation, we're ta we ta each talk about our tools and how they could interoperate with each other's tools and then with other things outside of that too. Very cool. Amazing. I, I can tell you that I, I think w what I'm doing will add something interesting to this mix, but we'll see as we go. Yeah. So Vincent, are you going to... Yeah, I'm going to take on the massive task of <laughs> <laughs> so um, so massive wiki. Um, so there are, are a lot of different wiki softwares and platforms. Uh, I would say the thing that differentiates massive wiki is it's also a protocol for having a Wikipedia that by its design can host the data and pull data from different um, repositories. So for example, you could, um, you could set up a massive wiki and decide to host it on Obsidian um, using the massive wiki protocol and have the data stored in GitHub. And so um, in essence, it is like a, a protocol that can be kind of applied towards lots of different tools. So people kind of have their own tool they like using, whether it's Roam, Notion. Uh, and so I think one the kind of mission of Massive Wiki, Pete, correct me if I'm wrong, is like to be able to let people have the way of um, pick their platform, um, but be able to have this like shared protocol for um, setting up wikis in a way that um, allows for interoperability across different tools. So does that mean that from my Obsidian, I could connect with your notion or Rome, or does it mean that I would go to a wiki and see my notion, my obsidian, your notion, his Rome, that kind of thing? Uh, <clears throat> it, it means, um, this is a really cool exercise, by the way, Vincent. Um, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, I, maybe I put you on the spot a little bit, but you did, did a great job. So I, I don't feel And bad. welcome to whoever this guy, uh, Mark, yeah, Michael. This is yeah. Michael, another, another regular. Hi, okay. Michael. Hi, Michael. 
Um, it's glasses. We we talked a little bit about Catalyst. Now we're talking a little a little bit about Massive Wiki, um, and it would be interesting to talk about Factor and then Sam's projects. So, um, uh, the 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 it's uh, basically the idea of Massive Wiki is is to use uh, really standard and really basic things to um, to host a wiki, and then also those things just by nature will end up being interoperable with a bunch of stuff. So if um, uh, Obsidian is is maybe the main tool we like to use as a massive wiki client, and if you had stuff in Notion, what you would do is export Markdown. So massive wiki is all about Markdown and interchanging, uh, sharing sharing Markdown files and versioning them and and uh, things like that. Like a Git wiki, yeah. Well, wiki is sort of Gitish yeah. anyway, so yeah. Um, it's a uh, it's a Markdown wiki uh, with. Okay. Git is the the uh, sharing and versioning protocol we like best, but we've tried a couple of different ones too. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I I've become a fan of Markdown um, since I started Obsidian. So yeah. Very cool. Very interesting. And he also has other projects like massive human intelligence project and the collective sense commons which that's how we connected and i'm curious how you found your way into the csc mattermost but that's one of the um things that pete is the <laughs> super admin of and has set up and kind of provides that as a service to like an ecosystem of different communities you know, it's it i've been i've kind of run into so many groups in the last couple of weeks like last month, maybe collective sense commons. Um, and like even just kind of getting out to high low and matter and, um, the, yeah, all of these groups, the, um, OGM, um, the, um, yeah, a bunch of them catalyst. Yeah. So I'm like swimming in all, I, I, you know, it's, it's so much information and I'm also very focused on what I'm doing. So, but it, these are all like, so, um, integral to this sort of mission that I'm also on, which is like about, um, harnessing human intelligence hype. Mm. Um, like allowing us, like, uh, you know, a, a lot of people, I don't know this, a lot of people are just like, well, just, you know, artificial intelligence will solve this problem. Like we, we can't do it. We got to like hand it off. Like we just, we haven't tried. We just haven't really tried. We haven't really put our minds to this um, democratic and sense-making collective collaborative sense-making project that, you know, you guys are all, you know, part of, and, and I'm also working towards. So, um, so it's great. It's just great to see that other people are like picking, they're all, you guys all have like grab different strands of this challenge that we're face, facing. I mean, if we don't figure this out, we're going to die. You know, it's like, we're, we're all going to die if we don't figure this out. So um, that's how I see it anyway. Not everyone agrees with me, but um, so this is to me, like, this is what it's about. Do you have um, with when when you're helping human intelligence? Do you have how do you do that? Processes, tools. Um, well, I, you know, if you want, I can jump in and tell you about what I'm building. Um, yeah. Okay. So what it is is it's 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 you know like so many of these things, you can explain it from many different angles, but uh, in many ways, one way is to say that it's a liquid democracy platform. Another way is to say it is that it's a collaborative sense-making platform. Um, so the, the concept is that, oh, hello to Jonathan. Yep. Hey, Jonathan. Um, so what it is, is it's it's at its core, it's, it's like um, proposals, you know, challenges are requests for proposals. Proposals are, you know, statements about what you'd like the group to do. And then, um, and then there's a voting system on top that combines score voting, rank choice, and approval voting. And so there's voting on every statement, like on proposals. And then within the proposal are sub statements that are designed to help people understand 
why the statement, understand um, detail, like work out details of the statements, understand why people like it or don't like it, like why or why not type statements. And then all of those are votable. So if someone proposes something, people will vote on it and say why they like it or don't like it. And then um, you can propose alternate statements. Alternates sit in the same holder as this, as the proposed, like an alternate proposal or an alternate why not, if you think you could state the same why not better or whatever it is. And so the alternates sit um, alongside the, the original ones. And then once there's more than one, then it turns into a rank choice or a, um, you know, approval type voting. Otherwise it's, well, it's still approval if it's just one, but it gets into more interesting voting types. So it's a way of, 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 um, iterating on ideas to find, um, solutions that are synergistic satisfiers ultimately. So it's, it's meant to be in a political arena. It's also meant to be a storage of the thinking that went into the final decision. So you can understand when you can see the statements that were made, how the amount of agreement that each statement has had on, you know, in the process. Like if, if I said, you know, let's, you know, let's build a dam and, you know, people said, you know, no, it could cause this problem. Like, what's this dam building for? Why? Why are you building it? Well, because we want to gain energy and, and we want to store water. Okay, why don't we, here's an alternate proposal. Why don't we set up, you know, um, swales and, you know, storage things and to store the water and, you know, alternate proposal swales and, you know, and why or what, you know, so you can kind of follow the trail of the thinking that went to the, into the final decision. Nice. So, thanks. <laughs> um, Sam, and are so you involved with um, any of like the topic quest or reason score any of them different yeah things. yeah yeah so i had a I had a really great meeting with um bentley davis and um he, he actually he's the one who told me about all you guys so i would not have found this group hadn't if it hadn't been for him and i, I can't even remember where i found him but um but yeah and and what they're doing is similar tangentially similar like it's it's also you know, Ypedia, is that what it's called? Or Reasonpedia, yeah. Um, it's related. And this is like, I think, um, like, I could probably find a way to integrate what he's doing into what I'm doing. It's a little bit different, but this, the thing I'm doing is a little bit more like governance oriented, sense making and governance. It, well, his is sense making also reasons why and why not, but this is more like a group of people trying to decide what actions to take, or it's not just actions. It could be like a group of climate scientists trying to decide on the wording of a of a, an official statement, like an official group of climate scientists trying to come up with their statements, like, and they could propose alternates and explain why, present evidence, attachments, you know, links, stuff, and vote on the quality of the links and the quality of the attachments and the quality of the, you know, all those things. And, and as you kind of see what what everyone's positions are, like how much agreement there is with each of the sub statements. And you could perhaps make a better proposal, like a better statement. And, um, and then with enough vote from a group of official climate scientists, for example, that could be kind of a stamped official statement. Um, and then, you know, the public could go in and look at 4B and see all of the reasoning that went into that statement, for example, like it could be viewable. And the evidence, the, all the attachments, all the links, everything. So, another another thing you'll bump into at some point is Marc Antoine Ferrand and uh, hyper knowledge. Um, I so need to start he, a I need to start a list here. I actually have a list, um, but yeah. Um, uh, hyper actually, if we let me let me share that uh, hack and B page again. And if we type things there, the world would be a better place. Okay. Yeah, I need to. I think I tried to go to that, but I wasn't able to. Uh, you don't need to sign in. Oh, actually, I I muffed. Uh, I screwed up the uh, the sharing settings on my first go, so it said that um, said that you weren't allowed or something. But it's yeah. Fine, so. 
Okay. Who went to Bread and Puppets? Is that that's in Vermont, right? I, I went to that at one point. Um, uh, the person who talked about that was uh, Mark Carranza, and he works at the Internet Archive, which is in San Francisco. Um, so oh, they must be okay. a traveling troupe. And, and they are. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, I'm looking at some code. Uh, Mark now looks like Topic Quests, Reasonpedia, Calabat. Okay, very nice. And is this the Reasonpedia page that I'm looking at? Uh, this the page that you're looking at is um, it's on a, a editing markdown editing uh, collaborative markdown editing server called HackMD. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and uh, this is something that we in in these communities we use HackMD often uh, to take notes during the okay. call. Okay. Slightly less evil empire than Google Documents. Yes. More or less. Okay. So. Um, and had her so, hand raising? Uh, <laughs> um, I missed it. Uh, I'm going to write uh, uh, hyper knowledge and Mark Antoine Perron in here. Jonathan, is that your way of saying you want to have something to say or just I like have, agreement? I have a question. Yes. Yes. Um, do, is your uh, the thing you're describing, it, it, can someone play with it yet? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Do you have a link or? I do, yeah. Um, it's 4b.io. I, I have 4b.org and 4b.io. They're both going to Amazon Web Server. Can you, can you put uh, that in the uh, Yes. Chat? Sorry, I do links. Oops. Did Pete put it in there? Is that the right oh, one? Oh, yeah, that's it, yeah. I just set up the routing for 4b.io, but you're going to need, you guys can have, I'm kind of trying to, I guess, limit the access to people who I know, so because it's still sort of in beta, but um, you guys are all good in my book, so I'll, I'll send that, and when I get that, there's a code you're going to need. Is that um, clicking on join? There's, so when you go to sign up, there's, um, there's going to, part of the sign up process is yeah, making an account and you'll need a code, yeah. Uh, the uh, placeholder text is s so close to the background color. Color? It's not yeah. readable. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll fix that. Access code. Um, I got it. I'll put it right in the document. Oh, thanks. Uh... Um, this document will end up being public at some point. Okay. Um, hmm. uh, the, That's fine. The, it's okay. What, what is the, can you spell the code? Out um, it's a little ugly. Um, it's in that document. I can spell it out for you. Um, lowercase. Oh, the hack MD. Oh, okay. I'll just read it from there. Okay. Yeah, lowercase m. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so it would be a little interesting to hear from um, uh, Wendy about what she does and Michael about what he does and Jonathan about what you do, if, if you want. Love Should it. we do the flip thing? <laughs> We did a, Vincent and I did a thing where we described each other's projects, mm. <laughs> which was entertaining and 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 uh, illuminating, I think. You could do like so, a three-way rotation. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like uh, <laughs> paper, rock, scissors. Huh? Right. Paper, rock, scissors, lizard, Spock. <clears throat> I'll introduce, well, so who hasn't introduced them? Jonathan, Michael? I don't know. Yeah. I feel better introducing myself, I guess. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous introducing somebody else <laughs> <laughs> because I don't always feel like I have a good grasp. Um, so I'm going to do myself. <laughs> so hi, Sam. Nice to meet you. Glad you're here. Um, oh, thanks. Let's see. So what do I do? Um, of the many variations on a theme, 
I have been very interested. I come from a world of positive psychology, mostly, and I have been interested in using technology to help people thrive. So to that end, I had an idea 10 years ago for a new platform. It sounds very similar to what you were talking about. It definitely had ratings as part of it. I saw everything being in more of like a graph database, although I didn't have that terminology back then, and where everything's nodes and relationships. And for me, I was, I was visualizing more of the front end of it rather than the back end of it, um, modeling it somewhat after um, Ancestry.com and the ways that we map knowledge and then include knowledge from a global map onto our own personal map. Um, once I started getting into this group, I would thought I would be meeting people where I would network and build a team and start to build out the platform. I was at that stage when um, I started realizing that everybody here has pieces of the larger or the larger vision. And so I decided, made a conscious decision not to develop something new and rather to come in and be a weaver of the pieces and try to help knit things together or make introductions or support the work of other people. So that's what I've been doing. Right now I am, um, I think I'm finally getting down to a nugget of um, something that can be done. And I'm trying to facilitate the doing of that. And that piece right now is um, something I've called the compass, which is essentially the profile version of the knowledge network. So just starting with the first cornerstone of the larger knowledge network, which is how do we ask people the right questions and gather the information for their own personal shift towards greater thriving. And so obviously, you know, as soon as you start interacting with information from other people, all the things that you just talked about are very much front and center. Well, who gets the authority to, you know, where, where does the authority come from that my idea rises above your idea? And what if we disagree? Or what if we have a different version of it? Do I always make a different version for my own personal tree? And then we go on our merry way? No, what would be better is if we start collaborating on one thing, but we could see what everybody's thoughts are. And that was for me always in the back of my mind. I've rarely talked about it in these spaces because to me it was one of those things that would get added on later. So I'm really excited to meet you. I'm really excited to hear what you're doing and to hear that you've you've essentially built a lot of that, if not most of it out already. So I would love to see how we can weave what you have with the pieces that other people are doing. And I think the, the list that Pete has put up is, is really the right place to start. I don't have much to add to that. Um, and that part of it, from my perspective, I think I'm still in the right place of doing um, the prof the work on the profile and individual first, and then building in, from my perspective, building in the collaboration part as we go along into the larger network of all information, all the time, at, for everyone, everywhere. <laughs> the dream, the ultimate dream. Okay, that's me. <laughs> Very cool. Wendy, is there a link that you would put in the HackMD or, yeah? Yeah, I think just my website, uh, though I need to update it with my latest chosen area of focus. How about, <laughs> but, um, how about the big mural board? Yeah, okay. I'll put a couple. Do you want do you want them on the HackMD, Pete, or do you want them on chat? Uh, HackMD is probably better. Okay, I'll do that. Keeper of the knowledge, the records. <laughs> the uh, the memex the uh, uh the akashic record uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> michael jonathan um, <clears throat> um i'm helping mark antoine and uh, jack park work on sensecraft which sounds a lot like what you're working on I would love to have a one on one with you to uh, yeah. compare kind of the vague sense I have of them with what you're doing. Uh, I, I did record a bug for you about the oh, there's there's yeah, there's a bunch I've got a there's a whole list that the I'm not really I much of a that. developer. I saw that I just thought you'd uh, like that I am active. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i'm a programmer been programming for 40 years i 
loathe corporate technology. I think it's just <laughs> driving the human race crazy. Yeah. Uh, I think it's making, it's saving the bottom line of corporations at the sacrifice of being useful for anybody. So um, I'm going to get off that bandwagon. No, I, I, it's, I, I just, I, I totally agree that there's like, um, it's pushing the cart in the wrong direction. Like, yeah. you know, anyway, yeah. Yeah. So kind of starting from that, and I have a, a sibling hate for money because I think the profit motive makes us open to the idea of lying, crime, all kinds of things. Uh, so money is not an ethical system. It's not unethical. It's just absent any kind of feedback mechanism. So I invented a thing called Civilization 2.0 that tries to tackle this problem by um, inviting people to crowdsource what they want for civilization. In other words, civilization has come into being the way it is um, in an arbitrary way, on an arbitrary path. It wasn't designed. People see it. Uh, for what it is and notice, hey, I can make a lot of money if I cheat or whatever. Um, so designing civilization, uh, you know, what do we really want? What would it look like? And what would it feel like? That's my goal in life is to build a game where people can experience those things designing and and then playing in it. And Can I, um, oh, go ahead, sorry, keep going. Well, I'm working with a fellow named Kyle Pavlock in Mapa City. He's, he's building a game that isn't really my game, but he read my white paper and loves it. So we're working together. Um, nice. Lately, my thing has been non-technical writing um, because, well, explaining things is hard and explaining things in a way that almost everybody gets is kind of my thing and has been for, since I was a kid. Um, the other thing I do is uh, alpha and beta test. <laughs> oh okay so um and i'm so the writing part i'm helping write the onboarding for um sensecraft and for this uh project that wendy mclean introduced me to um i haven't started the latter one yet well i guess i i started it today right wendy <laughs> Um, so onboarding is, is a big deal for me. I love to make people more productive through information. So I think that's good. If, if you want to know more about the white paper, I can put that in the hack MD. Yeah, if yeah you, better do. I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. Are you open to that? Definitely. Of course. Of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thanks. I, uh, yeah. I, what I just were you want to say. I, I'm sorry. I just like sometimes can't. I'm like an oldest child, so I'm just used to talking over all the little yeah, siblings. Me, like it's terrible. But, okay. <laughs> it's like a bad habit of mine. But I just wanted to say that um, this thing that you're talking about about um, um, like the okay. I'm reading a book called The Nordic Ideology. Um, it's a meta meta modern you know, but I'm really enjoying it. But one of the types of politics, like the last stage of polit politics he describes is called um, uh, democratization of the politics of, of um, narrative. Of the, so it's basically like the brainwashing that we all undergo as members of our culture. Let's like 
get a hold of that and democratically decide how we're going to brainwash ourselves. You know, yes. <laughs> yes. I call you know. it the echo chamber. <laughs> and the wrong people have the microphone. They have the, the yeah, the, the crooks are running the show, my grandpa used to always say. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So like like but and and like um the 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 there's this little group I'm in like a, a forum around this book that I'm reading and I've just proposed, hey, let's start like talking about this um politics of theory, politics of narrative. Like what what do we want to say about AI? What do we want to say about genetic modification? What do we want to say about pollution and about, you know, gender and race? And, you know, like what are, what are, what's the net, what's the, how should we brainwash ourselves more or less? So, you know, uh, it's great. Very interesting stuff. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I also should <laughs> say that I'm working a lot with Vincent um, every week and with Lenny McLean and with Peter and I would work with Michael if he had the time. <laughs> uh, so cool. that's great. Thank you. Um, Michael yes. said he's he's uh, half in and half out today, but um, ah. uh, smart and friendly person also, and um, he's got a project called Factor.com uh, without without the O. Factor is a, a kind of you could call it a social bookmarking tool, but basically it's a way to, to you could also call it a, a way to catalog resources um, and resources like links and things like that. And uh, you can do that with a feed. You can do it together with different people. Um, uh, you could be doing that on Facebook and be part of the evil empire, um, or you could do it on Factor, and Factor is not evil and isn't trying to make money off of you and not trying to share everything e everywhere for its gain. Sell your info. Yeah. yeah. And influence your behavior so that you exactly. become a better yeah. r rat on a cage wheel. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So usually, so this is, this is uh, usually we talk about a meta level above this, I guess how these various things are working together. Oh, that's so how, exciting. How we can work together. Um, OK, let's do that. What what, <laughs> what problems that we've run into <laughs> recently. Um, Love I it. Jump have, in with both feet. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have to ask you real quick, Sam, that, that this, this uh, particular meeting can get a little bit more technical than some of the other meetings. Um, and so I'm going to ask you a question, which I wouldn't usually ask you in our other meetings. But I wonder. Okay. It sounds like you're maybe not the programmer part of your operation anyway, but um, yeah. do you know anything about your tech stack? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so it's it's all JavaScript more or less. Um, it's uh, Node, um, React. Um, we've got MongoDB. We're using GraphQL, um, and we're using Fastify, which is um, kind of a I guess I think it's an API. Man, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, and yeah, that's that's more that's, or less it. Yeah, that's super helpful. Um, uh, Massive Wiki doesn't really have a tech stack um, uh, because it's it's kind of it, it reuses a lot of tech, uh, so it's it's Markdown and whatever Markdown editor you want, and Git and whatever whatever Git Forge and Git software you want. Right. Um, but uh, there's a thing called Massive Wiki Builder, um, uh, which is written in Python. I, I used to do some Node stuff, and lately I'm doing Python stuff. And, and I'm the coder, um, along with another guy. Um, so I do Python stuff, and then we host on Netlify. Um, I actually do a lot of AWS stuff, too, um, although not so much in this community. But um, Mattermost, for instance, is running on an AWS server, uh, okay. CSE Mattermost. Yeah, we're on we're on AWS also. Yeah. AWS is good, and part of the Evil Empire at the same time. Yes, I was. Yeah, well, it's like yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, what other <laughs> choice is there? <laughs> uh, just, uh, there's choices, there's few, but and they're not really yeah. better. Yeah. 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 Um, Vincent uses a tech stack uh, called Bubble uh, Bubble IO, which is a no code or low code maybe is a better way to say it, low code tool for developing um, usually fairly simple. Um, I've seen that. But I've seen Catalyst that. Is, 
is huge and really complicated and, and Vincent is still managing to do it with bubble, which, which is really cool. Yeah. So someone at bubble has... found out about catalyst and they're like, we want to feature it. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I watch him change things in bubble and it's like, how the fuck do you remember where everything is? <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's got to be hundreds the best of little uh, tiles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, my, uh, I just just to give you a little background. Um, I, I was building a platform called. Uh, I was working on a, a school called uh, Peacemaker Academy, just before the um, COVID hit, and I was building some software, and I I, dev I hired this developer. Like I met somebody in India, and, and I hired this. Um, him to do some design and I, I used this um, this company called Daffodil to find somebody who's who could really code. I mean, I, yeah, I'm a crappy coder. I, I can do it a little bit, but not not so well. And so like uh, like a year or two into the de the design of this development of this thing and I was I launched the school. I had my first students and um, COVID hit and I had to shut it down. I mean, I was teaching in the park. I brought mats out to the park and then it was all shut down and, you know, and then um, and I was just was sitting on my butt and like kind of wondering like what's the universe trying to tell me and and i was lis like listening to a lot of uh, daniel schmachtenberger and a, you know um, a bunch of other people and just like was, you know concerned about the world and and you know kind of realizing that it's really about coordination like we're having a problem with coordination and that's really what it is we need to coordinate at a higher level like a much higher level and we need to do like a, a phase shift sort of um, a leap. And um, so I just was looking at all the stuff and I was researching it at democracy and I was um, looked at, found, you know, found liquid democracy. I was like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. And looking at the different platforms out there. And I just thought, you know, I think I can do this. Like, I think I can design this, you know, more simply, like more straightforward, like more universally, you know. And, um, but I stopped with the coding. I stopped building this other thing. And the guy that was coding um, was I, I found out he was like being mistreated, like and being paid really poorly, like 200 bucks a month. And I was paying like way more than that. And then, um, so my friend from India, the designer, like found this guy, like he wasn't allowed to talk with me, but somehow we got a hold of him. And so I became friends with this guy and I hired him. So he's like, you know, I've been working with him for like four years now. So that's how I'm able to do these things because I'm paying him a hell of a lot more than they were, but it's still within my budget. And so that's kind of how I ended up being a developer of things without actually knowing any code, or I know some, but not that much. Nice. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if you've. I, I wonder if you know about Doug Engelbart and Augment and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you'd be interested probably to to read about him and and his ideas. Okay. Um, he was really early uh, in the early 60s doing collective intelligence, collective human intelligence, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can you can either look at what he where he got to and said he succeeded. And um, a lot of the stuff that we use nowadays are are still things that he came up with. Um, or you could say that he failed uh, <laughs> because we're still not very far. Better to um, fail at something that will eventually succeed than to succeed at something that will eventually fail. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Sort yeah. of. I mean. Well, I he's uh, he, I, I I met him once or twice and have friends who worked with him a little bit. Um, like post his career, you know, as as his life was coming to an end, it became clear that you know a few people should try to grab what they could and move it into the next generation. So I, I, one of my, one of those people is one of my friends. I, I, I feel like he must have had a really tragic feeling life because um, literally in the early 60s, he could see all of the stuff that we're doing now, you know, with networked computers and screens and video sharing and mouses and tablets. And he could see all of that and say, okay, and we've got a big problem and we need to solve it together. We need to have collective intelligence. And, you know, and, and literally it was 20 or 30 years later before the first copycat 
computers started coming out. And then it was another 40 years before we got even close to the stuff that he was doing in the early 60s. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> why is this so hard? Why can't we do it? So. Well, it's, you know, everybody's scrambling around trying to get their piece of cheese, you know, and um, yeah. it's just, you know, hard to see. It's hard to see the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, not everybody can do that. Or it was e really easy for him to see the future and really obvious. And it's like, and, and the, right, the rest of right. the world is like, what? <laughs> yeah. I, I got to deal with my punch cards today. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I kind of got to the stage of my life where I just was like, I don't have that much long, longer here. Like, yeah. I should, and things are kind of a problem, like shitty, like this yeah. is a crisis. And all right, what do I got to do? Let's roll up the sleeves. I got to figure this out. So, yeah. So it sounds like he was at that stage, maybe quite earlier yeah. in life. So <laughs> I, I, maybe not so much earlier in life, but, but certainly, yeah. you know, six years ahead of his time. Right, right, right. Yeah. Which is kind of a curse. Yeah. Even just um, being one year ahead is a curse. <laughs> yeah. The other thing to look for when you're looking for Doug Engelbart is the mother of all demos, is, it's called. And if you find some video of that, it's it's a trip. Okay. Okay. I'll pipe up since I'm, since I'm okay. around and it's, it's quiet um, at the moment. Um, and say hi and thank Pete for, for giving that nutshell I, f I figured if I stayed w w away long enough, somebody would describe factor and probably do it better than I would. So, you know, Pete's good at it. <laughs> um, but I will say just, Sam, just um, for, for your interest, um, I, uh, I mentioned in the chat that um, our stack very much overlaps yours. Um, and similarly, I am not the, uh, the coder of it. Um, and have worked with outside developers. So what good we can do each other, I don't know, but. <laughs> uh, interesting to happy, know. Happy yeah. to talk, happy to compare notes. Yeah. Um, I was also gonna say that one of the um, key starting points of factor that isn't currently live um, is something called the hunch, which was basically, um, you know, we were, we were trying to create a way for people to post something as a hypothesis, particularly with orientation toward, um, you know, things like disaster relief, um, uh, just dealing dealing with crises. Um, my co-founder and I started working on this around the time of Sandy, so like ten years ago, um, Hurricane Sandy, and um, and it was really interesting to see that a lot of the response, um, a lot of the online network response on the ground, Sandy, was spontaneously handled um, by the Occupy Wall Street folks because they had the, the web the working of, yeah. um, to, to deal with things. And, um, and there were some other, you know, um, disasters around that time, uh, earthquake in Haiti and, uh, you know, um, I'm trying to remember what, I guess, I think it might also have been an earthquake in, in Nepal that we were kind of paying attention to the way NGOs were dealing with stuff like that. And what you really wanted was to end for NGOs to have access to a common place where somebody could say, um, I think, you know, this happened here. I don't know how it connects to anything else, but you guys all should know that this bridge is out or, you know, this hospital does have power because they have a generator and, you know, and other things that people that are less factual and more like people suppose that this might be a good idea to deal with it so that other people can comment on it, add evidence that does or doesn't support it um, and give a confidence score to that supposition so that you might have 
like one person's brand new hypothesis that's not um, corroborated by anybody and doesn't have much evidence behind it, or maybe has a lot of evidence, but just a not, a, not a lot of visibility yet. And you can see how that comes on and you know people can at mention others to say hey can you take a look at this um right. and so people develop both hypotheses get ratified and people develop reputation around their activity on the platform um, so is, is this is this how factor is working it, it's not it's actually okay. something we built we prototyped and built and it was such uh an edge use case i mean right 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 something we could you know go big but with. it's it's but, it, but it's it's the it's kind of like the best thing that happens on social media in some ways like you know yeah. the arab spring and the you know like um it's a huge yeah it's like kind of what it should be for in a sense but anyway sorry yeah. keep going yeah no I, I mean i just you know have done a lot of 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 thinking and 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 you know a little bit of prototyping around this um, and and then kind of breaking it down to the idea of like, well, those bits of evidence we realized were more universally applicable and that, you know, having being a person who observes something, um, you know, maybe maybe you're in again, I'm, I'm dating the reference, but <laughs> um, but, you know, maybe you're in Sierra Leone and you like see this skin lesion on somebody's arm and you don't have you don't have a hypothesis about what it is it just is yeah. and you want to put it up and you want somebody else to be able to discover it you maybe all you can do is tag it with its location and time and so that lends itself to many more uses that can be you know dire life and death stuff like that or it can be um you know just hey here's something I found in this place at this time. What is it? Um, I yeah. think it's really cool. It's nice architecture, or mm. a flower or anything. Um, it, it, it called to mind the, the um, Taiwan's response to COVID a little bit. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, um, and I'm just trying to think of how that could be like, you know, would you tag, you would tag, a, you'd make a statement and sort of tag it with a variety of possible, like who would want to find this or what context would someone want to find this um, little message in a bottle? And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a really important thing. Yeah, anyway, um, try, that would be a fun one to kind of figure out how to how to um, like how to make a million dollars <laughs> no, no i mean yeah. how to you know how to make it useful you know yeah unfortunately <laughs> the the how to make a million dollars with it is, is sort of the easier course you know in terms of getting funding and if you don't want to do that um and unfortunately you know at the beginning we um we started as a as a VC fundable, you know, Delaware C Corp and thought that was, you know, where we were going and it does not, does not want to be and does not jive with yeah. <laughs> what we really want to do. So. so, so just for, for full disclosure, um, I've been coming, I've been, I have, I'm not funded, I'm self-funded and uh, bootstrapped and I've been really trying to figure out like, cause my, um, intention here is to like fully saturate the the public mind with the concept of liquid democracy um collective intelligence um you know the technology of voting and like a, a rank choice voting and and you know like I, I want this to permeate the consciousness of you know the world and um allow us to sort of jump up a level and so um i'm just thinking about how to do that. And one of the thoughts that came to my mind was, well, what if I just went the VC route and like created something that would be useful to a lot of people? Right. So um, I did come up with a, um, a, a an alternate governance system. So normally when you give money, you get governance, right? Like um, the, 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 
yeah exactly <laughs> the um the company is run by the by the people who have put money in right it's run by money ultimately you know um the um uh, uh fiduciary responsibility to maximize profit to shareholders right fuck that exactly um so but but what but 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 i may need some money <laughs> at some point like i'm not rich i'm not a rich man at this moment so um and so i kind of came up with this alternate system because forby should be we should be able to eat our own dog food in a sense of manage of governance of being able to govern a, an organization and so looking at like okay shareholders are going to want to maximize they're going to want to keep this thing alive not only that, but they're going to want to make it grow and make as much money as possible. That's their motivation, right? Users are going to want to have this thing really work well and really be useful and meet their needs and be something that is like great, right? And there's another group of people that would potentially care about the impact that this thing would have on society, like um, people who could care about democracy and care about the public commons, the, the, the epistemic commons and the, you know, all this stuff. Um, and that would have to be like a board. It would have to be a group of people that were sort of elected to care about that stuff or had to prove that they cared about it. Cause that's not something that everybody cares about. So, or can think about well. So looking at like, you know, having the shareholder thing take up like roughly a third of the governance. So if there's like a, a hundred investors, or if there's a hundred shares or a thousand shares, every share that you own gives you one one thousandth of one third, right? And similarly, every user, say there's a hundred thousand users, every if you're a user, you get one hundred thousand of one third of a vote. And then the board, including like employees and um, people who are elected to care about the actual impact of it would get like say there's 12 board members or whatever it is one twelfth of one third more or less so i've been kind of playing with this model in my head trying to figure out how to like al allow for investment allow for money to come in give investors some control because indeed they will promote the survival of this thing you know that will be their intention and and the and the growth of it you know and then but then that's that shouldn't be the the end of the the end of the you know discussion no it's just it's just about growth it's just about money sorry <laughs> i know you want to do something good so too so bad i got a good question for you yeah um so this is about um waiting a vote that yeah you know each voter has uh can the proposition being voted on be about this one third, one third, one third division? Good question. Um, and the, uh, it could be, it could potentially be, or it could not be. But there was another um, proposal that I had, which was that um, depending on the profitability of the company, that percentage could change. So if the company was extremely profitable, the uh, amount of say that the um, <clears throat> shareholders have would shrink so we would want to keep the the profitability at a certain level enough that the investors get their growth but not enough that they're getting 44 x return like they could get some growth but their amount of say would shrink depending on how close we were to our goal of profitability of just enough profitability enough to pay everybody you know, not go into debt, like not, you know, that kind of thing. And having it like a flexible percentage thing, something like that. What, Sam, investor, if you... what crazy investor would invest in? I know. I just don't know. I have no idea. No clue. Uh, Somebody would should, have to uh, be. You should talk to Grace Rachmani. Okay. Um, she's, she's raising, um, her plan is to raise a god awful uh, amount of money, actually. Um, okay. But she knows a lot about raising money, especially in crypto money, which isn't. She's not. She's not a crypto person, but she's worked with the crypto people. Okay. And, and her plan is to raise an ungodly amount of money. 
based on not is there is there a godly amount of money like does such a thing exist sorry <laughs> good question i don't know um also i, I wonder if you know about um I, i'm gonna put I, i'm gonna put in notes i'm gonna put grace grace's name okay. um uh do you know about a thing called uh slicing the pie or dynamic equity um no. you should you should look at those um it sounds know, like what i'm probably like what i yeah invented in my head but somebody's already done it yeah well first. they've gone through it and you know at, at least you can look at their models and there's a lot of writing about it um the original great the original person who wrote the book is slicing the pie um but it's also called dynamic equity and great. it it answers like you you, you kind of get the that idea and then you go then there's a bunch of questions i the, the more important thing is not the solution but the questions to it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so then, of course, you've probably heard of DAOs, and what you're talking about is is kind of like a DAO too. And Grace would be a good person to talk to about raising money. Um, so <clears throat> she's raising money essentially to like her her promise to investors is more or less you're going to help fund the kibitz. <laughs> <laughs> and what do I get from that? Well, the kibbutz is funded. That's a good thing, right? What um, is that a metaphor? Is that like a literal kibbutz? Uh, maybe kind of both. <laughs> okay, I'm I, just just so you know, like I, I my parents were hippies, and like I I grew up in this like really slightly dysfunctional but really fun, like really enjoyable community of like draft dodgers and you know um you know near do wells and, you know artists and whatever and um like and i was sort of pulled out of that community very tight community actually into like public schools and dragged around like mm -hmm. school after school after school by my dad and i have this like you know nostalgic um yearning for community and like you know uh, yeah there's a whole other project that i'm interested that i've been ideating around around that but i'm gonna have another time she, but. for what it's worth she did not use that word i've invented the word into use for what she's thinking of doing but okay. it actually kind of fits yeah. I, I, yeah um funding um yeah. have you heard of mark Payne? uh i don't i hmm, i don't know how i can get you in touch with him but he's he's trying to write an AI that makes money off the stock market, and then use that okay. money to fund cool projects like yours. Oh, that's great! Just so, like put a poke a hole in the beast, and then like hook it up to like good things. Yeah, right. Yeah, and he's he's really <laughs> easy to talk with. He's a good guy. Okay. Um, I yeah. I highly recommend you. Who who is that you mentioned, Jonathan? I didn't. Mark Kane, K A N E. Um, uh, he has a thing called, uh, <laughs> oh well, old age. <laughs> oh, uh, fintech. It, it, and there already is another fintech out there. So <laughs> I thought that was like a category of tech, but yeah. Yeah. It, Financial I may team. have I may have misunderstood his naming convention. So okay. but um he claims that investors can receive 200 X and um people who you'd have to talk with him about the details, but it's it's well, I think it's a real thing. There okay. are also, I mean, there are a lot of structures um, that, you know, involve uh, a for-profit that is owned by a nonprofit, um, and there are like uh, co-ops that are that when you set a third, a third, a third, there are. Um, uh, co-ops which can be for profit and can be governed by some combination of member users and yeah. workers um and then have board 
um, that, you know, there, there, there are a lot of things very much like what you're talking about. I'm, I'm, um, I just finished this course by, it was funded by the AARP. It's like startup.coop or something like that. I, I'm, yeah. But anyway, start.coop. And I just took their course, shows you I wasn't totally paying attention, but, um, and they have an incubator. And I'm a big fan of co-ops. I feel like for every essential human need, there should never be a for-profit. It should always be a co-op. I mean, co-ops can be for-profit, but you know, but it should be a co-op that runs it, you know. Um, and so I'm I'm interested in that. And I feel like this software would be a great service to co-ops where there's already a democratic body or process or, uh, you know, the governance is, is somehow democratically organized as well. So, you yeah. Um, also, uh, you might also want to join, uh, I mean, you may already know about this, but if you are in the CSC Mattermost, there's a channel for um, the Collaborative Technology uh, Alliance, which yeah, yeah, wait, Hilo maybe. and I mean, yes, I'm everybody, on everybody here just about has been at a CTA meeting at one time or another, and it's basically a group of people who are all doing, you know, what 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 we're doing i mean it I, you know it, it's it's a constant thing of we, we actually had a very literal discussion um at the last meeting which i think among us i might have been the only one at um which was uh um tibet from hilo was saying that's break yeah. um that's very yeah um was saying oh you know we're talking with zebras unite which is you know i know them yeah i'm a member yeah um and uh we're talking about they're we're, we're talking to them about using hilo instead of mighty networks which is the commercial platform that they're right. using now and 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 we were talking about like basically, okay, let's let's be candid about the reaction of everybody in this meeting to the news that that's happening. And doesn't it feel a little bit like, oh, I wish that had been my platform. And how do we make it so that we create some co-op of co-ops or co-op of our entities so that any like positive development for any any one of us is a good thing for all of us. Um, and so the financial incentives, even, even among, you know, it's like you come from a world of NGOs, which we were working with a lot, the NGOs compete with each other. It's, it's, not, it's not all about, you know, whether it's for-profit or of course it's much worse if you're in a for-profit -pro winner-take-all situation, but you know, cooperation between nonprofits because they're competing for funding from the same foundations and, and the same public um, is can be kind of cutthroat. And how do you set up the the economies that like make us, you know, we, we, we all talk about the idea that we should be interoperable and and you know, and, and, and work together and that that's the way to scale rather than one of us, you know, catching lightning in a bottle and being the thing that, you know, does a TikTok to, you know, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube as opposed to us all rising as a, as a web of, of interoperable platforms. Anyway. Right. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think a good example mm -hmm. of ridiculous competition is how many different remote meeting softwares there are and how many different uh, right. chat systems there are. And I have, I don't know, five or six of them constantly right. running and uh, I often miss things, respond out of date. Right. So yeah. th there's this, there's, there's, there's these, like, I think about all this a lot in biological terms, uh, you know, I 
practice as a doctor for 12 years, so I'm always in kind of biology mind. But um, like there's there's this ben there's the benefit to um, competition, um, and then there's like the, the 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 downside of it, right? And like, um, but the thing is that we're kind of like getting to the point where we have to coordinate past our biological tendencies a little, like a little bit, you know, like, um, uh, like my son loves Fortnite, you know, and I've been playing this shooting game. Right. And it's just like you, it, it, it instills the worst behavior. You, you land on this place. You just destroy everything you can with a pickaxe, you shoot everybody you can see, you try and get all the stuff, you know, and it's just like, no regard for anything but it's really fun it's really fun and um why is it so fucking fun why it's the same reason sweet tastes good because it was of benefit to our animal ancestors our animal ourselves our our dna you know but at some point like to do that to just go in and take what we could and and like you know shoot at anybody that you know disagreed with us and whatever but like, we just have to coordinate, we have to learn how to coordinate at another level. And um, <clears throat> it'd be great if we could figure out how to do that here. I mean, here we're a bunch of people, you know, trying to drink the Kool-Aid. We're all sitting around the Kool-Aid going, should, should we drink it? You know, like, um, or how do we drink this stuff, you know, or whatever, like, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it'd be great. It'd be really great to, for us to figure that out. I think one day you're like, you know, you're explicitly like, you know, the Kool-Aid vendor, you know, of like coordination in this group, I would say. <laughs> I'm actually trying to come up with a brand new drink <laughs> and see if, <laughs> see if we can all like put in the ingredients so that we have something even better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I can just say like, you know, I would prefer, you know, I'd prefer a smaller piece of a bigger pie you know, um, the problem though is of course coordination. Like we all, we're all like, you know, visionary, you know, idea people who are, you know, have, you know, it's, it, it might be hard to coordinate like it. Um, and, you know, and we might, you know, otherwise we're going to try to just out platform each other or whatever, you know, like why, why should we do that? Like, um, but, but then, then again, the process of like, herding the cats into, you know, like something that could be like easy to use, useful, like maybe not all of these things will fit into something, you know, they might, the, all the parts might not fit together. Um, maybe, maybe they will, you know, maybe they would, but what, what would it look like? I mean, it's, it's a, it's a challenge and, and it would, it, I think probably part of the problem that you guys are facing, I can imagine is that you know, we only have so much gray matter here. We only have so much attention. We can only focus and we're all focusing on our own thing. Like I'm, I'm like such a cognitive miser these days because I'm really trying to get this thing to work. And, um, and then for me to go, okay, but let's put that aside. And like, let's think about like six other parts and how do those fit together? And how are we going to like, that's like, you're, it's a big ask. Like you're asking me to like, you know, put down the weapon, you know, like, go put out my hand and, you know, more than that, like, you know, it's like, um, yeah, invest, you're asking me to invest in something that sort of feels like it's against my interests in some way, you know, and, you know. If I can interject, I, I, I think one of the keys is that we try to figure out a way that we can come at this. And, and I think in, in many ways we have with, with specialization in the things that we each want to focus on. I mean, if you think about the distribution of information in the form of, you know, books, documents, MP3s, video files, you know, uh, newspapers, um, email, that all 
basically have common formats that come into somebody's um, home and transpose that into a digital space where you think about, um, okay, I'm gonna, like, I have an idea for the way that people who are responding to disasters might want to utilize that um, that stuff and organize it. It's sort of like, and, and, and somebody else is like, I have an idea about how people who are just making governance decisions might want to do that. And I have an idea about people who are wanting to um, collect old artifacts might want to do that. People who are working with regenerative agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. And just like our homes are different and personalized, and we might say, okay, I want to have, you know, an apartment in a big space with a bunch of other people, and we're going to share the this facility and that, and this other person wants to do this other thing, and like I want to be stylistically this way, that these kinds of lenses that you can switch between on the same building blocks um, and that this you know where, where Pete you know takes things down to the level of you know this is a markdown file it looks this way here it seems on point to me about like how do we all agree on the formats in which we can exchange things the way that email or or image viewing has come to be like you know nobody it doesn't if you use like if you have your photos in iCloud or you have your photos you know on your hard drive or whatever it doesn't mean that you can't take one from the other and look at it and you can't decide oh I think I'm going to move to you know to Google for this and whatever right, I mean right, it's, right. it's not it's not a silo it is a silo they are competitors but it's not siloed in the same way and you know figuring out ways that we can work together to provide different lenses even simultaneously on the same stuff like oh you know i'd really like to look at this as uh you know a massive wiki or a factor stream or you know what how would this look on in a, a miro board or you know that that right, those right. kinds of right, right. that let us compete in in certain ways, but that aren't winner take all. That aren't and that aren't anti interoperational. Right, right. The good the good form of competition. Um, I, I would like to comment on your point, Sam. That um, why don't we coordinate better? And why can't groups that are doing the same thing just merge? Yeah. And my experience as a guy trying to merge here and there and everywhere is that sometimes the chemistry is right and sometimes it ain't. And unfortunately, uh, that seems to be the prevailing factor. Um, so I do a whole bunch of work thinking, wow, this will really help the people. And it's ignored. Or I'm told it's not time for that yet. Mm -hmm. um, so the natural inclination that I have to, hey, I'll, I'll go underneath what you're doing and support you and help you lift it up. And um, the thing I'm lifting is not part of what they're building so that's my bad i didn't learn what their time frame is or i didn't learn what they're trying to do and that leads to those descriptions don't often don't exist descriptions uh what we're trying to do what we're building now what exists here what oh, i see I see. So right. It's why, not codified. We haven't codified it. It's, yeah, it's not decided upon. Um, I know so, a software that can help with that. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> 
I love the idea of a needs driven organization, a needs driven world. Yeah. The idea being that, well, think of advertising. You see a truck with a beautiful babe, sorry, Wendy. Um, and you think, oh, I want the truck <laughs> because, you know, it's shiny and they, um, it's our got a babe on it. <laughs> reproductive instinct gets engaged, <laughs> which is yeah. very strong, of course. And that creates a need for a truck on top of all my other needs. And society isn't built to serve my needs. It's built to make money. And money generates advertising, which generates needs nobody really wants. Um, it's, but you know, have you ever seen run into nonviolent communication? Like, yes, That's it's not one of the needs list. Yes. Well, it's, I mean, but there's no the need. It's a, they they give you funny strategies for needs. They don't give you needs. They don't like you know, the babe on the track is not a need. It's a, it's a funky strategy. You know, <laughs> for like, you know, connection and like, you know, uh, affection oh, and like, yes. you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I sum that up by saying uh, most people don't know what their needs are. Yeah. And yeah. as a result, they have these unfulfilled needs which drive their emotions. Those yeah. emotions trigger a strategy that does not fill the need. So, yeah. you know, the, yeah. um, the upset emotion is still there so alcoholics drink a lot and consumeritis happens and so right forth. but 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 so what you're saying is like if we if we orient towards the needs like the real needs um it might inform the strategies better like if we keep an eye on the ball you know which is the actual need not the funky strategy yeah that that i call training mm -hmm. and then there's you know, if, let's say, right now, everybody needs money, and it's all they need. And that's, yeah. you know, it creates all kinds of problems. But if we withdrew that need from everybody's need list, they'd be able to focus on getting their needs met. I I wonder, though, for me, I feel like the 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 problem so the money is like the the universal exchange media you know and if you focus on that you might do silly things but if you learn how to focus on the needs then the you know we can figure out different exchange media we can figure out different ways of like you know managing the flow of resources right like it's it's a it's a resource flow thing but like what like we're 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 missing the, the like we're you know my teacher used to say don't pick up the sesame seed and forget the watermelon like we're we're missing the the thing like the real thing um which is the needs you know the, the real needs for connection for you know safety for, for you know long term feeling good about like you know the path we're on and and we're, you know how our future generations are gonna you know what they're going to inherit and you know all this stuff all this like real stuff you know and like yeah we're just focused on the exchange media and totally ignoring the actual needs yeah right um i just i guess my point here is a you're totally right and yes but people are distracted by the need for profit even if mm -hmm. all their needs are met they still need more money um yeah, so that's, that's true. only one problem among many uh, but i figure if to your statement if, if we focused on our needs and we looked at strategies for getting them filled we'd be better off and my yeah. counterpoint to that is how are you going to convince them and one, I, I don't know the answer. And I, well, I only have one extremely crazy, I should be taken out behind the barn and shot. Um, get rid of money. Just 
replace what, it. What do we with what? What do we replace it with? Um, that's the sixty-four million dollar question. Like a time bank or something, or like what? Um, benefit to anybody increases your wealth if you create it. Well, but wealth again, you're talking about some kind of a measure, right? Somehow. Right. But instead of basing money on services rendered or um or mined from a mountain, um right. you you do it in terms of benefit to the the world, in terms for, so, for mining. Um like you could have a currency that's called like like I call it regard. Feel goods. Yeah, regard. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's like a good I one. say, drag me up behind the barn and shoot okay. Me. <laughs> Later. It's it's we'll, give, it's, we'll, 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 we'll let you live another day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. not a bad idea at all, Jonathan. I the and I having an, an exchange economy is 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 kind of the problem. Yeah. It's it's so hard to like it's it's this thing of exchange is integral though it's like it's in biology it's like you know glucose you know the universal fuel you know you get too much of it you get diabetes you know you don't get enough you die you know it's like how do you how do you how do you ex you know how do you manage the exchange of energy you know of 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 of, of how, how do you coordinate work without someone's here's here's your bread you know here's your salt for the day you know like yep. you know, it's it's um yep. it's a tough that's it's a tough nut to crack that's exactly what i'm experiencing there are all kinds of problems with yeah. a regard based economy that i i want people who are smarter than me to help me solve them i, I there's a I, I would i yeah. Yeah, I would love to see that problem solved. Also, I, I feel like maybe it can be solved like it, other ways. Like maybe the the exchange medium ca can like become something that's secondary to the the coordination, the the practice of coordination that's happening. Like it can be like operating. It can be managed as a, as a um a substrate that's not the focus anymore you know somehow but it, it's still like there's some way of saying okay you did you know you you did a lot of work you or you you know you contributed and you made a difference here you did this you know you you know you dug the ditch or whatever you know like that this exchange happens but but that somehow we transcend the focus on that thing <clears throat> i don't know we're getting pretty philosophical here but i Mm -hmm. it, it is about that. It's ultimately about what yep. you're saying. Yep. Yep. There's time bank issues. Uh, there's, uh-oh. What's that? Time to go? When Wendy's leaving? Yep. Bye. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to have to go soon too, but I was going to, uh, I was going to suggest or at, well, first ask, have you read The Dawn of Everything? I am reading it. I, I was going to, and, and Sam too, you know. No, no. Just in terms it. of, uh, oh, it's, awesome. it's awesome. Yeah, and, and yeah. in terms of of, of re rethinking your thoughts about the necessity of money and and different media of exchange, uh, right? Good, good kick in the ass, and and look at examples of different societal structures. Yeah, okay. it, it's an eye opener. Very valuable eye opener. Interesting. Yeah, I'll, look, I'll check it out. Um, well, I, I, I guess it's it's eleven thirty p.m. here, so I should probably get jump off to. Um, but Where are I, you? I'm in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Oh, uh, cool, cool. Yeah. I still want to do a one on one with you, man. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how do I do that? Yeah. Um, I have like a link where you can look at my calendar. Yep. Um. And you could just link on the with that, although there's been problems with that, as Pete will <laughs> attest. Or you just just ping me wherever the pinging is happening, and I'll, I'll send you, you my want, email. You guys, Here, I'll, do you guys want to set up something right now? 
for next yeah, week. Yeah, let's, let's or, just or put, put an email in the chat or yeah. Yeah. Are, are you not in the, in the in the MD? Uh, not okay. in there. Do you sure. know how to in do the, the hack MD? In the hack MD. I'll put it in there. I don't care. All right. Fine. I've got to jump. Great to meet you. Um, and I love call. to love to talk to you. Um, yep, let's do that. Share my my experiences and maybe of use. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like we've had some a little bit of a similar path. Uh -huh. of, yeah, so sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Nice to meet everybody. Oh, I'll put. I have like a scheduler. Yeah, I I can't vouch to its. I I, this, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> okay, I'll just just just, ping yet, me, anyway. just email me, right? Until I figure um, Sam, out. Sam, I'm I'm sorry we didn't connect earlier today. Yeah, even though I I think we're due to meet in 28 minutes, but I don't <laughs> think we should. Yeah. yeah, maybe not. Yeah, but I sent you a, a, an email with the emails I got. And you might want to look at them. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know if that'll help or not, but it might. Yeah, it might help me figure out why it's not working per correctly. So yeah, I thanks. Did I put together uh, a list. So one of the things that uh, Catalyst does is lets you create like a collection, uh, like a curated collection of different objects. So I made this one after hearing you like talking about like, how do we actually create like the right structure for new startups? And it's funny because I put, I was like putting in Zebra's um, United and the start.coop co-op. And then those were mentioned in the call, like a few minutes after I put them in here. <laughs> um, and I was like, damn it, beat me to it. Um, but I put <laughs> slicing pie, I put mm. exit community, which is an interesting concept if you haven't heard of it. I, I know of it. Yeah, I do like it where you, you rebuy the equity of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Platform.coop is also a pretty good. Yeah, looked into them, yeah, for sure. Um, Anyways, I'll share this with you in case you want it. I'll put it on in the hack MD as well. This is great. I I um I need to do more of this. Like uh, all of my stuff is in random, like Obsidian documents and stuff, and it seems like a nice um, way to kind of group align um, uh, into aligned uh, concepts. So okay. For, for what stuff. it's worth, the way that we use the hack MD is to write on it and then move it all into an Obsidian. Which will then get published to the web. Okay. So we don't usually keep stuff on an on a HackMD like this. And right, right. what web will you put this on? Uh, I I will leave it here for a while. Um, the flotilla notes go into the flotilla wiki, which oh. doesn't get published to the web, uh, unlike most of them. Uh, it, it just ends up accumulating in GitHub. We so, don't have a web front end to it. Well, nice. Okay. I'm. I really want. I'm like. There's a part of me that's really rooting for figuring out how to integrate all this stuff. Like I'm. You know, like, we're, we're I don't know what it. Hard. I don't know <laughs> what it would look like. Yeah, but I think like wow, be interesting. That's, that's my area of expertise, by the way, Sam. Is Integrating all this stuff. How, how it looks. Oh, okay. And how to navigate it. I think. I'm, I think it's a very hard problem. It's it's not my area of expertise. I designed that whole web, the whole Forby thing. Like I designed the whole thing. You can tell it's not my. <laughs> I mean, I, I borrowed some ideas from people. I had somebody do some design very at the very beginning, and then it just morphed, and you know, I just ran with it. But anyway, so I'd be very happy to to hear your take on things. Be very yeah. glad yeah. to do that. So that's something I do. Okay, great, everybody. Thank Thanks, right, everybody. See you, around. Yep. See you next time, everybody. Likewise. Bye.